now that we have filtered our data by year in our update function and bound our data using a key function keyed on the year, we're ready to start updating what's on our map as we iterate through our years. While it might seem like overkill to use a key binding function, since we're only visualizing a single year with a single circle, we could imagine a scenario where we would have multiple elements on our page interacting in a complex way through updates, exits, and enters. To begin updating our map based on a single year, we start, as we most always do, with our SVG element. In this case, we want to select all the circles that are currently on the page, which in this case is going to be every circle for every year, and then rebind our new data, in this case our data filtered by year, and to properly update our map, we will use a key function, the same key function that we used when we initially bound our circles. Because we often would want these two to be the same, I'm going to abstract this away into a function defined above. In this case, again, remember, we're simply extracting the key of the nested object that gets passed to the key function. And in our initial data bind, we can simply pass in key func so that we're sure when we update our data and rebind our filter data, we can use the same key func as well. Now we've been through a lot of code since we've explored it in our browser. So I want to take a moment to pause, place a debugger inside our update function and start inspecting where we are. Since update isn't being called currently, I'll also place a debugger at the end of our plot points function so that I can experiment with the code defined within it. Here you can see we have our nested object, which corresponds to the 20 games of the World Cup. And each nested object, if you remember, has the key set to the year and the values with the total attendance x and y coordinate, but also our new teams array, which in this case you can see is a nice array of all the teams countries who participated in the World Cup for the given year. And I've added a call to the update function with a given year so that we can then step into it and see the debugger catch inside our update function. And now if you look at our source here, you can see that we're in the update function. We have filtered data, which represents an array with a single object. That object represents a single year. In this case, I ran update with the year 1930, and the values is what we would expect. And notice that we have this year argument available as well throughout the update function since we pass it in as the argument. To understand a little bit better how D3 updates work, let's see what the selection currently looks like. A D3 select all on circle returns an array of 20 circles, which makes sense since there's 20 World Cups plotted on the map currently. And let's put a breakpoint right after we bind data to circles to see what it looks like after we've bound new data to it. And if you look at the circles variable now, where before we bound data, the svg.selectAll above returned an array of 20 elements with the newly bound data, filtered in this case, since it only has one element, it returns an array with only one circle in it. Remember, from our previous Venn diagram, we know that the exit selection corresponds to every element present on the page that does not have any corresponding bound data in this new data bind, or in our case, data bound and filtered. If we look at the enter selection on the newly bound circles, you can see here that it corresponds to an array of a single element, which has an update property. The update property has a circle, and that circle corresponds to the new data we're going to be adding. In this case, the year 1930. And if we inspect the exit selection on the circles, it says we have an array of 20 elements. But notice near the bottom here that we have a parent node as part of the array. So if there's 20 elements and there's also an additional parent node element that we didn't have, can you look at the list of circles here and figure out which year of the World Cup is not contained in the exit selection? Remember, we have run update with year 1930, and I've shown you that the enter selection has one element under the update key.